Hello, everybody, and welcome to, you'll probably agree, we're finally <laughs> talking about the Oscars 2018. <laughs> The first film on our list is uh, The Shape of Water. Oh, very good. It's a lot of blood. What went on in here? Ooh. It was you that found my fingers. There was mustard on them. Pat, what did you think of Shape of Water? The Shape of Water was my number one film in my top ten list. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it, it, it took all of its themes to the highest level. Whether you want to call it a Cold War thriller, whether you wanted to call it a love story, whether you wanted to call it a, a metaphor for the time of 1962 uh, in, in, in the way it treated uh, African Americans, gay people, et cetera, et cetera. I just was enthralled by this film. And it was a movie about movies. You know, the main character lives above a cinema. They are uh, immersed in you know, watching old movies on TV. It was just, it really um, affected me on a very uh, visceral level. To me, it felt like, just from a story perspective, he was kind of going over a, a bunch of uh, themes that he's already tackled before. It's, it's a great first Del Toro film. Like, if you've never heard of this guy, which I think yeah. is wonderful that it's getting all this Oscar exposure, um, but if you're you know, going back deep into the catalog, it might seem kind of retreadish. Uh, as far as the social themes, I agree that he kind of touches on a lot. I don't think he tackles much. And what he does tackle, I think he kind of handles ham-handedly. We didn't see nothing. What am I doing interviewing the shit cleaners? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I would love to hear your rebuttal to this, but. Uh... Well, I, I mean, you know, I don't, I, I, when I say themes, I wasn't trying to say that's the, 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 the gist of the movie. Sure. I think that people who live today would be very interested to know that, you know, a closeted gay man and African Americans and, and, and just workers in general were treated with such disdain in a time you know, that wasn't too far, you know, 50 years ago, a half century. Why did she fall in love with him? That's, that's, I like, think, that's I a think central it, question. I, well, I again, that. spoiler I, alert, I think she was part of the fish people because her gills become active when, they, when she becomes a, un, goes underwater. See, she was found in a basket by the sea, very Moses-like. Oh. She is, she is the, she's the connection between his world and our world. And is, is part, it could be a amalgamation. You know, the scratches on her throat and, and the fact that she can't speak. When he looks at me, he doesn't know how I am incomplete. He sees me as I am. It's just a bit of a stretch for me watching this this fantasy film that has so much going on. We've got I, nine films. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Let's move on. One movie, I, I think, I didn't know if it was going to get nominated or not, but everybody was rooting for it to get nominated. I don't know if it was deserving of it, was Get Out. Yeah. Yeah. What? Do they know I'm black? Should they? You might want to, you know. Mom and Dad, my black boyfriend will be coming up this weekend. I just don't want you to be shocked that he's a black man. <laughs> it's an all right film. It's a pretty mm. lousy horror movie. And as mm. far as a social allegory, I love the fact that so many people went to see it because that means that there's perhaps studios more willing to take chances on mainstream uh, stories of this nature. I just don't think this is the film. Yeah. I think this is this is the template, and years from now, perhaps even Jordan Peele is going to improve on it and make something really remarkable. Again, it was something that really affected me when I saw it initially. Being being an older person, I, I have seen a lot of changes mm -hmm. in attitudes in race and feminism and all that stuff. Yeah. And to see somebody of Jordan Peele's age commenting upon that in the way he did and the allegory that he made was stunning to me. Now, I wrote this movie in, um, in the Obama era and uh, we were in this, we this post-racial lie. 
This movie was meant to call out the fact that racism is, is still simmering underneath the surface. And it, it can really affect the people who need, who, who would go, okay, I'm going to the movies. Hey, I love Key and Peel. Let's go see <laughs> yeah. Get Out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they're not, sitting there and they're going, well, I'm thinking about some of my attitudes. Yeah. You know, as you, and, and, and again, and the 50th anniversary of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner to do the exact same plot with that sinister it, twist to with it. the yeah. sinister twist it, it it was just sheer genius to me so. right i remember i was at a film event and i was talking to this guy who runs an arts program so like the inner city and stuff like that and he was telling me uh that it, it felt like a movie like where moonlight felt like a movie that was written by a black guy to write a movie for white people so he could win an oscar about a mm. film about homosexuality and uh, race relations. We could talk about that yeah. too, but go uh, ahead. <laughs> he said that Get Out was pretty much like spot on with uh, race relations. Fair skin has been in favor for the past what, couple of hundreds of years, but now the pendulum is swung back. Black is in fashion. I wish it stayed as a psychological thriller yeah. instead mm. of ending in the third act like a slasher. <laughs> Because yeah, I, I guess I wasn't even considering that because I, I was I was again going with the flow of the film, and I, I see when you say you know uh, we can study this and say oh well there was an alternate ending that was changed by the studio, mm -hmm. but to me that again broke the broke the 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 back of what the movie you know just to have some humor. You know, to after we had experienced this for like 90 minutes, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on what you want out of a film. I feel like I've seen I've seen Get Out a hundred times as a horror movie. Right. Um, I feel like if you're gonna go for something with and and try and make a political statement, then you inherently have to make people uncomfortable. People should not have been leaving Get Out praising it for being so progressive and edgy. I think they should have been lamenting the fact that they'd just been horrified and taken away from it that it was progressive and edgy. Shit! Ah, she's so, she's a fucking, she's a, ah, she's a genius. It's too uh, feel good uh, right, right. For, for, for my taste. Oh my, it's a terrible thing to waste. Let's go to uh, Lady Bird. Ah, yeah. <laughs> you should just go to City College. You know, with your work ethic, just go to City College and then to jail and then back to City College and then maybe you'd learn to pull yourself up and not expect everybody to do everything. <laughs> Here we go again. I, no, no, no. That's, uh, that was that's one of my my two big ones. I'm I'm a I'm a fan of Lady Bird. I I oh. really felt like uh, Lady Bird was a movie that really grew on me. Oh, you good. know. Uh, and when I first saw it, and it grew on I me mean, literally as the movie was playing, which sure. was the beauty of it. That is the beauty of yeah. it. Yeah, because like when it starts out, I'm just going, what's the big deal? This is just another coming-of-age film. It's playing all the scenes that we know, you know, girl finds guy. You know, you have the mother who's kind of oppressive, which it was interesting how they reversed the roles where instead of the father being sort of the one who's overbearing, it was the mother, yeah. but still she's loving. And then, well, I'll get into the ending later. That really relates to that. And then how the father was really kind of the one who was so loving. It was almost like he was a pushover. <laughs> but as a but movie, they was, did show him as that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But in the most loving way possible. Yeah. You know, which is great. But as, as the movie progressed, we 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 first see the scenes, you know, kind of playing at a normal pace, right? But then. As we know, as we get older and life progresses and it gets faster, the pacing of all these scenes that we know keep going faster and faster and faster and faster because that's how life is. It goes before us like just in an instant. So then the most wonderful part of that film is I'm like, oh, wow. Now all of a sudden this isn't just like another Richard Linkletter film or another sort of <laughs> mumblecore film. People would ask, well, so, so what happens in the movie? And I was like... Not much. <laughs> this is something. This is something different. This is something that really echoes what this is. What Boyhood should have been, you yeah, know. Oh gosh. Which Boyhood was so vastly overrated. But <laughs> <laughs> here's what I'll say about it. And again, you know, again, being a little, little of of, of experience and age, I'm relating to the mother and father character very, very distinctly. But I'm also relating 
to a Cersei Ronan's character yeah. as Lady Bird because everybody. Sersha. It's actually Sersha. Uh, sushi? You're right. It's rapid. It's just woo. It starts to like go in, in, in like a, a lightning pace by the time you get past the Christmas season in yeah. your senior year. So um, I was really impressed how she captured that. That number one, number two, a middle class family. How often do you see that yeah. in the movies? Uh, paycheck to paycheck family who is struggling and tr seeing how are we going to get this person to college? Yeah, you know, and and wow, you know that those two things were so remarkable in that film and so followed through on. So many people have come up to me and said, I've been that daughter or I've been that mother. And I couldn't be more proud of the work that we did and I couldn't be more grateful that it's been embraced this way. Yeah, I mean, this is the, the movie that I wish Juno had been. Ah. Um, it, it reminded me of a, of a really good version of Juno and Saved uh, from what, 20, 2003 or 2004. The one thing that I absolutely loved about this film was the ending because ah. it didn't... Apparently, someone's like constructing something downstairs, but uh, <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, uh, but the the ending was so great because it doesn't end where most coming of age films end. Like usually, like you know, go go back to like American Graffiti or something like that. It ends where they're going to college. Here, our pro I'm gonna give it away. I don't well, give that, a shit. Well, I mean, it, it, you know, you expect it to fade to black when she yeah. gets to her 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 dynamic school that she always wanted. Yeah, but then. Yeah, she gets to college, and it's not great. It's not like, oh, I'm moving on with my <laughs> right, life. Right. Instead, college is miserable. She's no longer in her comfort zone, and then right. she understands who her mother is and why she loved her. And then there's just this whole element to it <laughs> that really... You didn't like that? That was, that was what really no, won No, I'm saying I got, I got yeah. chills. No, 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 like, no. You, you, you that described was like, it perfectly. Eh. Yeah, yeah. That I'm, was, I'm not sure that about the reconciliation with mother. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Well, I, hey, again, just like everybody goes yeah. through senior year, if you went to college, you go through freshman year. Yeah. And you go to a party and you get drunk and you make out with somebody you don't see after that, yeah. you know? And, and I'm like, wow, you know, she actually, instead of, you know, just fading to black, she actually showed a little bit of life yeah. that happens after you get to college. And it's not all roses. It's not and all peach roses. Fuzz. Yeah. You sometimes end up in the emergency room. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I had always wanted to make a movie that was basically about home. What does home mean? And the way that it's difficult to see it clearly when you're there and it's not until you're gone that you look back and you understand what it was. <laughs> yeah, she did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lady Bird, one of the, if I had a criticism of it, it's that it's not like a Netflix series. I would I would love to watch yeah. these characters and, and follow them. Yeah. You know, I'd watch Saoirse Ronan go to college and <laughs> get out of college and do whatever. Oh, okay, yeah.